Okay, so we are done. Uh, I spent the last hour, hour and a half on this knife. So first off, I had to remove the old handle. So once the handle was removed, I simply had to figure out how much of the tan do I have to grind down to get it to fit the new handle. And honestly, it took a little bit more work than I thought. I thought it was actually gonna be a pretty straightforward install where I just pull off the old handle, plug the new one in, uh, glue it, set it, and we're good. However, the tang of this knife here on the Tojiro, it's, uh, it was like a millimeter and a half taller than the opening on the uh, handle, on the new handle. Um, so anyways, I gotta find out another solution to grinding down my knives versus doing it all by hand, especially when it comes to something as thick as a tang. Uh, again, that took, you know, the, the majority of the hour and a half was spent on the tang and it was basically trial and error. I grind down, you know, for like five or 10 minutes at a time and then I try to fit the new handle on and that basically was what I did for the next 45 minutes or so. So I have two bastard files. One is a medium and one is a coarse. Um, I was working on the medium bastard file for, I don't know, a good 10, 15 minutes and after a while I simply went to the extra coarse and it worked really well. So after about 20 minutes of working on the extra chorus bastard file, it finally fit where I liked it. So after the initial filing is done, the tang is very rough. So the tang, the choil, and the back of the knife was just really rough. And so I simply took two grit sandpaper. First, I took 80 grit sandpaper and went through the entire knife, mainly all the choil, the tang, and the back of the spine, and just basically smooth out more or less all the rough, the really rough edges that was caused from the bastard file. Then after that, I took the 320 grit paper and went through the areas that was touched up by the 80 grit paper. By that time, most of the rust was removed from the tang and all of the really rough areas from the spine, the choil, and the tang itself was pretty much smoothed out. So after all the rough areas were smoothed out, it simply came down to installing the handle. To install the handle, I tried a couple of different methods. I will try others in the future, but I did have a 50-50 mineral oil and beeswax mixture that I have here. And right now in this room, it's about 45 degrees and the mixture is fairly hard. However, it was brought into a house that was 65 or 75 degrees. I don't know what that beeswax would do. Um, so I wasn't exactly sure that it would be the safest solution to use at this point. So I did install it and it felt good. But again, I didn't want the blade falling out of the handle um, it was being used in a warmer home. Now I don't have epoxy here and so I simply want to use what I have. So I have some Gorilla Glue which have been, you know, successful in most installs that I've done. So I basically just filled in the handle as much as I can with Gorilla Glue and once it stopped taking in glue, I simply dropped the tang in and the Gorilla Glue would spill out and I would pick up whatever excess I can. And for the next 10-15 minutes I had to keep wiping away the excess because Gorilla Glue tends to bubble up once it starts solidifying. And once that uh, bubbling is done, it's set in. And so I'm gonna let it sit in now for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, I'll take this into the kitchen and I'll test it, use it for a little while. But the knife is done. I like the way it looks. It looks really nice and rustic. I've thought about polishing this knife from head to toe or from tip to heel. Um, I'm not quite sure yet. I may touch it up at some point in the next day or two if I have time and maybe post another video of me doing a complete polish of this knife. But as it is right now, it is ready to go. You know, whoever wins this knife likes it the way it is. I will send it out the way it is. Um, yeah, it's gorgeous. It is so perfect. I mean, the handle size is just so right for this knife. All in all, I think I've spent about four hours on this knife, fixing the broken tip, uh, removing the rust, and then, you know, grinding on the tang, installing it. Yeah, I guess it's about four hours or so. And after the initial video was posted a couple weeks ago, folks asked about the tang, was it rusted? 
Yes, it was actually rusted. It wasn't all that bad though. Now, if you look real closely in the video, the rust did go all the way down to the bottom of the tang, but the rest of the tang did have the Kodiyochi finish on it. So that actually helped protect the knife from the rust. And another thing is a lot of folks don't realize this, but some of the manufacturers out there will actually use a different material for the tang. I believe someone like Moritaka actually used a stainless steel tang for their knives. And so their knives actually don't rust out at the tang level. I know it's not perfect, it's not brand new, it's not like new anymore, it's just different. But I think it's still a really beautiful, really rustic, and certainly will be a happy addition to any person's kitchen. And for those who are curious, I get my restoration knives or my broken knives from the folks over at Cutlery & More. So I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video. Whenever I restore a knife, I'm giving it away to one of my Patreon supporters. And the money that I raise on Patreon is going towards a donation fund, which I will donate at the end of the year. If you wanna support me with what I'm doing on Patreon, that's great, there is no obligation to sign up. But if you guys do, you will get a chance of winning one of my restoration knives. All right? Well, thank you guys for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video. And I'm going to throw a really quick shout out to three people this week, and the first is Joshua. Now, I do know that Joshua is serving in the Air Force because when I get an order on my e-store from a AFO or AFP box, I'm pretty sure it's the Air Force. Uh, so Joshua, you bought two 10-inch roll buffalo straps. I'm going to give you a free upgrade to a 12-inch roll buffalo straps for both of your orders. And I uh, hope you will like them. And uh, this is just a way for me to show some appreciation and to say thank you for serving in our military. So God bless you and stay safe out there. And I also wanna give a shout out to Amber and Ben Avila. So I don't know Amber or Ben, but Amber reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and simply told me that her husband has been in a serious car accident and he's been watching my videos um, as a way to, <laughs> I guess, give his mind peace and to learn while he's recovering. And uh, that was just a really cool thing to hear. And so I just want to say thank you, Amber, for reaching out. And uh, Ben, uh, I'm praying for you. I hope you recover well. Hang in there. I know that recovery can be very slow and long. And you're going to have great days, good days, and then not so good days. But don't let those days get to you. They will come every so often. But do your best to stay hopeful, stay joyful. And you've got a great wife standing by your side. I know she's taking good care of you. So Ben and Amber, thank you guys for reaching out and I hope to hear from you in the near future regarding your recovery.